All right, good morning, everybody, and welcome back to True Crime Loser. I hope you're doing well this morning. So today we are going to go over the Daniel Holtzclaw interrogation. And just to set the scene, he made the late night, after hours, off the clock traffic stop at 2 a.m. Took 15 minutes, went home, said he tried to fool around with his girlfriend, but she was tired. Classic. Went to bed, woke up the next morning, came into work at the normal time, was doing his thing right when he got there, and someone came over, like a major or something, came over and said, the sergeant or the boss wants to talk to you about some allegations about 50th and Lincoln, which is where the after work, after hour stop was. Follows the major in you know, follows the major towards the sergeant or the boss area. When he gets close, he sees the boss do one of these. They'll lean over and look at him. We've probably all gotten the boss lean look before, and it's never good. I think part of the reason I like to watch these interrogations is like, no matter how bad your day is going or how in trouble you are at work, you're, you're not this in trouble. Nowhere close. And so Daniel turns the corner and gets into where his boss is, just kind of leaning there looking at him, and the sex crimes detectives are sitting there with him. He follows them to their neck of the woods. They mush him in the corner of this little interrogation room. He barely fits because he's huge. The desk is smashed right up in his real estate and there's even a concave cutout in the desk so the interrogator can get in there and cut him off even more all right the female detective starts first she's just in there alone and her one of her strategies throughout the whole thing is just let's just talk about something really just mundane and pointless but like we're relating and we're buddies and just to keep the conversation going so she comes in and is like yeah I gotta sit on this special chair because I had back surgery and and it's just like that's awesome good for that's sorry that your back hurts type of thing but she uses it as a strategy of you know to act like we're buddies to lessen the s- severity of what is actually happening. So the first time we see that is during the Miranda rights. So they sit down, yeah, my back hurts. I need this special chair. You know, don't be embarrassed. If this isn't you, we're going to get it on to someone else, she tells him, which is, I think, a little mental play saying we do believe that something happened. This isn't going to be your word against hers. Oh, you say this, it's going to disappear. She goes out of her way to say, if this wasn't you, We'll get it on to someone else. And uh, and then she reads the Miranda rights, which always kind of brings home the severity of the situation. They always are sitting there like, oh, yeah, really? I, you like to sit in chairs too? Whoa, that is so interesting. Well, anyway, you have the right to remain silent. You have the right to give up your soul. You know, all of a sudden those words just really bring it home for people. So her strategy to lessen the... You know, the hit of those words are she she intertwines that she's also left-handed. Again, so interesting the, as a Holtzclaw. So she's like, you have the right to remain silent. You have the right to never see your family again. Hey, are you a lefty? Whoa, I'm a lefty too. Do you shoot left or right? Left or right? Like it's always this really like relatable, like tell me, left or right? Oh, right, me too. Oh, I shoot left. Um... What about what you eat? Do you eat left or right? Like, this is some, oh my, this is crazy. Two left-hander. My mind is blown. Eat left or right. And, you know, Holtzclaw's sitting there. Probably the last thing he wants to do in this point is make small talk about being left-handed. So he's like, oh, you know, I eat both. And she's like, wow, you know, left-handed people are crazy. Anyway, if you can just sign here, all your rights will be gone. It, like, pops out of it immediately. So, like I said, her strategy is, like, we're friends. We're relating. This conversation is interesting. Really hard question about graphic sexual allegations. And then pull back out. Are you left-handed? No way. Type of thing. 
And during the Miranda rites mixed in with holy crap, we're both left-handed. Rocky, the other interrogator, had come into the room. And Rocky sits down, is not saying anything. They get through the holy crap, you're left-handed too, Miranda rites. And there's a silence while they're signing. There's paperwork and stuff to do. And then Rocky just goes, I masturbate right-handed. That's what he chooses to say. That's his opening. And just like that, Rocky is introduced to the story. And so he says that, and the female detective is like, Oh, you do? Well, what? Let me think. What hand do I use? You know, what, you know... This whole, and so they get a lot of crap for being unprofessional. If you look in the comments, they get a lot of criticism for being unprofessional. And I think that it goes off the rails later in the interrogation. I think they do decent work here in the beginning. We'll get to it. But if they deserve criticism for anything, it is, and they do deserve, I think, a lot, is the way that they... After this, they cast this huge net out to try to find more victims. And they cast out such a huge net. And then when they were talking to people, they would use these like leading questions. It wouldn't be this bad, but it, you know, essentially like, do you like money? You want to sue a cop type? They would just lead them in and it kind of, it turned into a circus because all of these, everybody and their dog was trying to come get a piece of a cop. There's one really bad footage where they're interviewing this woman. She's saying that, I don't know, that he raped her or something and they get done with it and she thinks it's over, but the camera's still running and she goes, was that good evidence? And they're like, um you got to tell us. And she's like, well, you know, I don't know. It Maybe he didn't rape anybody. And he said something, and they were like, what? And then they all walk out, and the door closes. But the questions that they, you, they cast out this huge net, and then the leading questions, it turned into, it didn't help their case at all. I think they thought that having a ton of accusers and all everyone and their dog in there would help, but it really made the few accusers that looked you know, pretty suspicious, like something probably did happen, it makes them, it diminishes their story. It it just, there was, everybody, like I said, was coming in, even a dude came in and made allegations, like, I picture they're sitting in there with all these papers and stuff, and a dude busts in, like, he raped me too, and they're like, Kevin, go home, Kevin's like, sorry, just leaves, but my point is, the net that they cast it just didn't help their cause. But they get a lot of, like I said, criticism for being unprofessional. And I think what explains that, I think it's a strategy. So what their, they, their strategy was is get in there and really normalize sexual conversation as much as possible. So then in 20 minutes, when they ask him, you know, did you do this to this woman? It, it just seems like part of the, hey, we're all friends, we're cops, we're talking sex because we're old buddies. Oops, did I say that? That's okay. We're friends and cops and we're friends. Yeah, boobies, you know. So instead of saying, did she show you her breasts, Daniel, or did she flash you her breasts or just keeping it professional, I think the strategy was, which, I don't know, maybe they do deserve criticism but I don't know if it helped but instead of being like did she show you her breasts okay and then you know taking down the answer it was like which they use boobies as if it brings the vibes down or something like oh it's not as serious I'm saying boobies instead of breasts did she show you her boobies did you see her boobies and so it gets grating after a while and just kind of it's like all right okay so Rocky comes in I masturbate right-handed I feel like if you wrote down everything Rocky said in this, just the transcript, and then handed it to his boss, his boss would be like, for like a end of the quarter review or something, his boss would be like, this is what you say in there, Rocky? This I, You could have said anything. There's all the words in the world, and this is the things that you say. Why do we pay you, Rocky? This isn't... But she goes along with it. She's like, ah, what hand do I use? Woo! You know, we're all buddies. 
Um, and then they ask him, you know, what did you think when you walked in and saw us, the sex crimes de- detective, sitting there? And she goes, oh, no, I haven't. He goes, oh, I've seen you before, but I haven't seen you talking to Rocky. And Rocky goes, I'm a nobody. So right now he said... I masturbate right-handed and, quote, I'm a nobody, end quote. And that's all that he's contributed. So he's a nobody, and then things get kicked off. So she said, okay, we're all friends. We're all talking sex. Hey, oops. And everybody's comfortable is the vibes I think they tried to create. So now she said, okay, there was some allegations made on a traffic stop. Did you make a stop after work? And he goes, yeah. I did. And then she goes, okay, tell us about that stop. And we get to hear Holtzclaw describe his version of the stop many times. And so her strategy with this is she talked to the alleged victim and heard her story of the stop. And now she's just going to sit back and listen to Holtzclaw's story of the stop, compare you know, I think she definitely believes the victim, so she's going to see how he, Daniel handles the moments that differ from the two. And like I said, just sit back and see how Daniel describes this stop. And um, it's a lot. Daniel, like I said, you'll hear it a bunch of times, but he saw her swerve, pulled her over. Uh, Talked to her for a second, learned she didn't have a license, learned she had no insurance, brings her back to the car, talks to her a little bit back there. He said he pat searched her, just very common like traffic stop. Said he searched her a little bit, um, told her to pull up her shirt just so she could see, or he could see the waistband, standard stuff, backhanded her, pat searched her, blah, 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 put her in. His car, and he's saying whatnot a lot. He, you know, he's going, and then I, you know, Pat searched her and whatnot, and then I talked to her and blah, 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 and whatnot, and I put her in the car and whatnot, and and then I searched her car, found some pills, smelled some Kool-Aid. He likes, he, he tells her that today he smelled the Kool-Aid a bunch, but didn't find any liquor, but he smelled it. So he found some pills, smelled some Kool-Aid, came back, talked to her for another 10 minutes, and uh, and then, yeah, said, you know, get your license, get insurance, don't do any more drugs tonight, and go straight home. I'm going to follow you, he tells her. Goes back to his car. They sit there for a while. She's taken forever. He gets bored, and he leaves. All right, so she obviously, the detective, Detective notices that he left out all of the sexual stuff that the alleged victim put in. And so her first strategy, instead of coming out right out and saying, did you force her to do this, you know, she really plays it slow, which I think is a good idea and produces maybe the best moment of the whole interrogation for the detectives, maybe five or ten minutes from now. She plays it real slow. So she's saying, did she, you know, did you maybe accidentally touch her butt a little bit? You know, which compared to forced oral sodomy, a little butt brush isn't that huge of a deal. So she doesn't come right out and say, well, this is what she actually said happened. She goes, did she, you know, did you touch the butt? Maybe as you... As you grazed, no. And he's saying, no, I did backhanded. And it's like, okay. And so Holtzclaw, if he didn't do any of this, it's just if he did, you know, if he is innocent, which people think he is, there's no way, for at least for me, to watch this interrogation without everything that happens thinking, okay, if he's innocent, I think his mind is probably here. And if he did it, his mind is probably here. So if he's innocent with this whole thing, He's probably sitting there, um, you know, if the stop is just the way he said it, then he has no idea the, you know, the butt thing. He might think that, all right, that's what she said. That's the only allegations. And if he did do it, he's sitting there wondering, what did, what did the victim tell the cops? You know, is it just this butt thing? You know, so... 
he's sitting there kind of just describing the stop over there. I pat searched her. Everything's fine. I'm just a good cop. So then they say, did she said that she showed you her boobies? Did she show you her boobies type of thing? And he goes, no, I didn't see them. Are you sure? Did she just flash you? Because if she just flashed you, we don't care. You know, that happens. They may, you know, women want to get out of a ticket. They might flash you. Did she just flash you? We can work with that type of thing. Trying to get him to admit, did anything sexual happen? Even if it was just her, you know, unsolicited. Did she flash you? Did you see? And he's like, no, I didn't see him or anything. And then the drunk, or then the female detective goes, because when, you know, when girls are drunk and Rocky chimes in, he goes, they like to have a good time. It's like, thank you, Rocky. So now he said, I masturbate right-handed. I'm a nobody. And in a kind of a weird, it's like swinger's voice, he goes, having a good time. So he's having a great outing today. And so, like I said, they're just like, did, you know, did she maybe just flash a little one? Or when you... Showed you her waistband, just whoop, a little one fell out. They're trying to get him to admit anything sexual, just a little tiny sexual thing happened without the whole enchilada, which they're getting to. And like I said, her big, the female detective's big thing is to just be like, we're friends. Hey, let's relate on something that no one cares about. And then, did you assault this woman? And then back to like, oh, crazy. Let's relate a little bit because we're friends. All right. So then now it's Rocky's turn to take a little go. And uh, he starts with the question that I would have started with, too. Do you normally make traffic stops off work? And she, he goes, no, I really don't. He never answers like, no, I never have. This is the first one. But she swerved like a fucking son of a bitch. I had to. It's always, I really don't. If someone asks me a question uh, and I answer, uh, no, I really don't, or not, no, not really. It's I. That doesn't mean it's the first time I've done it. So I thought that was a weird little. And then the big bluff happens, and Rocky's whole thing is he uh, he says really and honestly a lot and uh, kinda a lot. Those are kind of his kind of kinda. He even says kinda twice once. He'll be like, and he'll. He answers himself with, okay, so he'll go, all right, I'll be honest, okay, there's a lot of video out there, okay, and you need to kind of, kind of be honest, and, okay, you really need to kind of be honest, okay, because the video's not looking good, all right, and so his whole thing is he's going to make the bluff about the video, like the old, all right, so we got a lot of video, okay, it's not looking good. Okay, but he doesn't just full in and go, Daniel, we got video. We're looking. It's, you know, it, we got video, Daniel. He keeps half bluffing and then be, being like, well, we haven't seen the tape. So he says, like, there's a lot of video, Daniel. And, you know, as you know, it takes a while to scrub it up, but there is a lot. Uh, okay, and I'm going to be honest. You need to think about things, Daniel. And it's just like, all right, thank you, Rocky. That was a nice little thing you said, but nothing happened from it. Daniel sticks to his story. At one point, he goes, should we show you the video? And Daniel's like, yeah, but they don't have the video. And um, it's the bluff, his whole, like, there's a lot of video. It's not looking good. We haven't seen it, okay? But you kind of, kind of need to think about things. That whole bluff thing is petering out. And then the female detective comes back in and says, are we asking enough questions? And Daniel's like, yeah, you are. And then out of the blue... The female detective goes, do you recall putting your penis in her mouth? And Daniel goes, I don't. And then she says, would you? And Daniel goes, if I did it, yeah. And he's looking at her for a second and then just go, like brings his eyes to Rocky and does not want to look at her. 
And so I think that if her strategy, if the detectives had any wins throughout the whole thing, I think it was this moment, just not playing their cards at the beginning, kind of slow playing the real big part of the allegations, you know, just like, you touch her butt, no, okay, you know, did she flash you a little bit, or just, you know, was she trying to get, uh, no, okay, and then kind of out of the blue, do you recall putting your penis in her mouth just to see his, because it seems to me, if the if you had if it was just a normal traffic stop like Daniel is saying and nothing at all happened to hear that sentence like for them to bring that into the situation like do you recall putting your you know I think that there would be a bigger reaction if he didn't do it like wait what that's what she's saying this is something is wrong here this is crazy like but just to go I don't would you remember if I did it? Yeah. You know, I feel like that is a strange reaction. If that's, unless, you know, if he, if it did happen and he did do that to the woman, then it wouldn't be as surprising because in your head you, you might be ready for it. So I think I wish I, or I would think that he would be more surprised by that question than he was. And then Rocky has one of his best lines of the whole thing. He goes, quote, K, well, I think you really, in all honesty, need to really double think about this. I mean, I've got to be honest with you. It doesn't look really good. <laughs> I've been using that one. I got, when someone's like, hey, how are you? I'm like, I got to be honest with you. It doesn't look really good. So there you go. And um, then they pump up the SANE exam, being like, well, she took a SANE exam. There's going to be DNA, okay? If there's DNA, you're, she's going to find it. And Daniel's like, okay. And she's like, are you sure nothing happened? And Daniel's like, no. And, and then it's my least favorite strategy of all interrogation strategy, which is the... So she, they pump up the same exam, like she, they're testing her for DNA, Daniel. And then it's the fall on the sword strategy. So they go, okay, Daniel, here's the thing. You can fall on the sword now. And we can, you know, get a handle on this. But if you don't fall on the sword now and DNA comes up, then we're going to have a huge problem then. And it's, you see the strategy a lot, and it never does anything. It never works. It should be flushed down the interrogation strategy toilet because unless the person is very stupid, they realize that it, there's the same amount of a big problem, whether he comes out and admits to it now or if it comes out and has really good evidence and the DNA comes out. It's the same big problem. There's no real... There's no real oomph behind that, like, okay, if you don't do it now, it's a huge problem. With, like, a underwear Russ, he, it was way different because he didn't want her to, his wife to be, you know, involved and have their house ransacked. So then you could use that, okay, well, if you don't want the house ransacked and you don't want the new house, her dream house ruined, let's work together. But this, it's... All right. And the female detec detective actually said, this is time. It's time. And I, w I added in for the exact time. It's time. You know, and, and uh, Rocky's still in there like, you know, I'll be honest with you. It doesn't look good. There's a lot of video. I haven't seen the video, but there's a lot of it. And is there any reason, any reason at all that your penis would be out? And he's asking these long, like, theatrical interrogator questions. And then they get into a weird thing where it's like they've sort of admitted that they haven't seen the video because it's going to take a few days. And so then they just end up asking him, so are we going to see your penis on the video? Are we going to see her boobies? And it's... It's a strange line of questioning because it's like he doesn't know what's on the video. And so, you know, are we going to see? Is there any reason on the video we're going to see your boobies? Okay. And they're just asking him. And it's kind of just going nowhere. 
He's sticking to the story. They ask him about a ride that he gave someone a few weeks ago. He doesn't remember. That saying that woman is doing the same uh, allegations that this one is, which is weird. They ask him, what do you think about all this? He says he wants to get it over with. He wants the DNA stuff, everything done, um, which you could read that, you know, in two ways. Um, anything else? No. All right. So they take the first break, 45 minutes in. Then they come back from the break and they just want to hear his story again. So she goes, just so there's no confusion, I want to hear the whole story of the stop again. Same type of thing. At one point he even says, I ask what's the deal with this, blah, 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 and whatnot. He's kind of just saying, yeah, and then I did this and blah, 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 and whatnot, and whatnot, and whatnot, and whatnot. And... I think that I also feel that if he is innocent of everything and this is just a total railroad job, I don't know if you would sit there and just take it from this woman and this guy. They're sitting there like, are you sure you didn't see your boobies? At a certain point, you'd be like, this is all crazy. I'm not listening to your booby questions anymore. You know, I didn't do... But he... He really just sits there and, no, you know, blah, 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 and whatnot, and whatnot. Um... And the, uh, oh, I had one thing to say. All right, it's all right. And the questions at this, it kind of, the like I said in the beginning, it goes off the rails. They're sitting there being like, trying to ask him something. There's long pauses now in between while they're just kind of sitting there, the interrogators looking a little beat up because they really don't have any evidence. The DNA is coming back. The and it you know comes back negative. But at this point in the game, they don't have really any evidence. So they're kind of trying to bluff a little bit and trying to scare him with the evidence that may come back. But so the how they get criticism for being unprofessional could be in this section because it's kind of they're like. I picture them, but like the interrogators at this point, like their hair's messed up and they're kind of like, just like, do you, have you ever gotten a boner at work? Like the questions have a, they've asked so many sexual questions at this point. It's like, has your penis ever been out at work type of thing? Like they're, it's not even really related to this case anymore. And... It's, it's like into the deep water of this interrogation. And then finally he kind of pulls out of that and they're like, are you worried about it? Are you worried about this? And again, he's like, I'm, I mean, I'm worried about everything. I just, I want to get this. And then Rocky comes in like, you got, okay, you got to be, you got to be honest. We're going to be honest. Okay. Okay. You kind of need to be. And he said, you looked more nervous when we talked about her boobies. And then, so they start Again, with that, like, did she flash you? It's okay if we don't care if she did. Did she flash you? And I think what they're trying to do is just admit something sexual. Okay, she showed you her boobies. We can go from there type of thing. And no. Then they ask her if he likes older women. He says no. And they, at the same time, ask, how old's your girlfriend? And that, to the female detective, she's like, ah, we asked the same question at once. We're still just good friends and laughing and having a good time. And then it gets into what I call as the whelp. Because uh, they're both kind of just sitting there like, whelp. And she, she, they go over, well, like, what would her motive be if it wasn't to get out of a ticket? Daniel's like, I don't know. I'm just sitting here. And they say, okay, well, did she ask you about your gun? And this, I think, is a weird part. This is one of the parts where I think looks makes Daniel look strange. So she's like, did you ask her about, was she talking about a gun at any point? And he's like, yeah, she was like crying hysterically most of the time and was talking about how scared she was of my gun. And and it's like, why didn't you bring that up the very first when they asked you, you know, about the stop? You never brought up that she was crying. You never brought up that she was so worried about your gun. I think this makes it looks like he's just, whether he did something sexually abusive or not, it just looks like he was just fucking her around out there. 
and harassing her by just, yeah, I'm gonna, we're going to talk for 10 minutes now. You're so scared. She's sitting there crying because she thinks she's going to get shot or something. It makes me want to ask Daniel, Daniel, what are you doing? Why are you sitting there with a 57-year-old woman while she's crying? I think it would have made him look better at the beginning when they're like, all right, tell us about the stop for him to say, yeah, I mean, I pulled her over, she swerved, then she was crying hysterically, so I didn't want to put leave, I didn't want her driving off crying hysterically, so I put her in my car, I let her calm down. It almost looks better to me if she if he would have brought up, yeah, she was crying like crazy, so I just, you know, but to leave that part out, like, yeah, she was crying a lot, and I was like, he at one point Daniel's like, why are you crying? You know, why are you crying? Why are you so scared? It's like she doesn't want to get arrested and she doesn't want to get, you know, she, you're, she's in the back of a police car at two in the morning. She doesn't know what's happening. She's scared. It's the answer. And, um, but I thought that was just a little weird throughout the interrogation that she, they would be like, well, did she, was she crying hysterically? And he's like, oh yeah, she was. He like left that out. And then they say, well, would you take a polygraph? And he's like, yes. And who knows, you know, if he was really down. He never ended up taking one. But if he was actually wanted to take one, his reaction is like pretty much like, yeah, I'll take one. And the smart thing to do is if you ever find yourself in an interrogation where you are guilty and they say, do you want to take a, po a polygraph? Instantly say, yes, I do. Because most places, they're not going to be able to set one up in a number of hours or a day. So while the interrogation is being filmed and, the, you know, the judge and the jury are probably going to see the interrogation, just sit there and go, yeah, I'll take one. Of course, take one right now, you know. And then later, when it's not being recorded in the official interrogation video, just go, oh, yeah, I'm sick. Sorry, I, I'm, I'm so broken up about this whole thing. I can't, I, I got to turn down the polygraph now. But that one's not being filmed you know, that's what Scott Peterson did. Like, yeah, I'll take one. And then later he's just like, yeah, I'm not going to take it. But the, you know, the judge and jury, they just hear them say that, oh, he turned it down for being sick. And they really can't hold that against you. So as a cop, Daniel probably knew that. Or, you know, maybe he was just wanted to take it and get it over with. Like the DNA test that he would just, let's get it over with. So polygraph. And then they, the questions really start to just get out there. So they're like, you know, are you on testosterone and ro or roids or whatever? And he's like, a, you know, a little bit. And she, she goes, are your balls shrunk? Did it shrink your balls? And they're talking about that. And then the questions are really just getting out there. And they don't even really seem... And the, this section ends. The last one, the female detective goes, have you ever had sex with a dude? And he's like, no. And they're like, all right, we'll be right back. They take a break. All right, moving along. All right, so they ask him about another traffic stop that he did on May 8th. I think this is June 19th that they're doing this interrogation. That oh, A woman that he did run. They show her a picture. He doesn't remember anything about her. He doesn't remember... Um, then they uh, talked to him about how scared and how much she was crying. The woman that he pulled over in the after hour stop, she was so scared about a gun. They talk about that. They, then they asked him about all the supplements he's on to be that jacked and that huge. And it feel, it does feel like the interrogators are badgering him a little bit with questions that are not on topic so it's like even if all these supplements did lead it's like what does it matter it, if they, it either happened or it didn't so they're like all right list the supplements that you're on and he's like okay i'm on t4 uh pre-workout i'm on creatine i'm on g-force 9000 post-workout i'm on whey protein he's going through all these supplements that he's on I, they're going i think they're trying to f force a narrative like he's on testosterone or something and it makes this he's made he's all he's horned up he's this horned up roided out cop that just can't help himself then they talk about how the 15 minute traffic stop if you don't write a ticket and you don't call it in that takes a lot of time if you don't do that the 15 minutes is kind of long which i agree with but it's like uh, i don't know that's just the time that i take doesn't really go anywhere and then as it's wrapping up, she goes, all right, well, we'll schedule a polygraph. 
And he goes, yeah, great, let's do it. I think that was a little bluff to see how he would respond. He responded well. And then as she gets up, she goes, okay, what's your girlfriend's number? And he gives her, Daniel gives the female detective his girlfriend's phone number. And then as she's leaving the room, his cell phone's sitting there on the table. She goes, don't call her. And she leaves the room. And she goes out and calls his girlfriend, where if you remember way back at the beginning of this episode and in this interrogation, he had said that he had gone home after the 2 a.m. off-the-clock traffic stop and tried to fool around with his girlfriend. He had said that they had fooled around. They had done everything except sex. He had, like, tried, stuck it in a little bit. And then she was like, no, I'm tired. And the interrogator was like, well, that's pretty mean to get it let it go that far and just, you know, stop it then. And he's like, yeah, I don't know. So she goes out and said, and calls the girlfriend and asks the girlfriend, which I don't know if I've ever seen anything like this in an interrogation where you go out and, you know, try to catch the person in a lie. But anyway, he goes out, calls the girlfriend, asks the girlfriend, and any good lawyer would just have this thrown out by like, maybe the girlfriend didn't feel like telling the truth to some detective that called. Maybe she was nervous and didn't feel like talking about her sex life. But anyway, I'm sure the detective said, hey, this is really important that you be honest about this because, you know, Daniel, this could relieve Daniel of chart. You know, who knows what she said to him to be like, tell the truth. Did Daniel try to hook up with you? when you got home that night and the girlfriend was like no he didn't i he didn't even try we didn't fool around at all daniel had said they had fooled around done everything except sex type of thing she was like no so then the interrogator gets back into the room and it's and she goes well i talked to your girlfriend and she said that she didn't that you didn't try to fool around with her that you guys didn't do anything that you never it never got to you didn't do anything so now I don't know what to believe is this section the whole thing is like well now you know she said this and Daniel doesn't really have much to do other than like I don't know what she said I tried to you know I tried to sleep with my girlfriend I don't know what to tell you I tried to sleep with her and the detective is saying, well, if, you know, I'm a woman and you remember stuff like that. And then he's like, well, I don't know what to tell you. And this is the only time that the interrogator kind of raises her voice and is like, you know, this to me now, I don't know what to believe. I caught you. I think I caught you in a lie type of thing. Doesn't really go anywhere. And then she goes, okay, well, I'm going to call her again. Because uh, Daniel was like, well, I tried, got home, we tried to hook up. She was wearing a white thong and a t-shirt. And then the interrogator's like, okay, I'm going to call her again. And she, and while Rocky and him are just sitting in there, and this is just the brutal end, and Rocky goes, do you have any questions? And Holtzclaw goes, no, nah, I mean, I just want, I want to get this over with. I want to get DNA I want to get all the test done. I just want it over with. And he's like, okay. And then pretty much it ends from there. They come in. They strip him down of all of his uniform stuff. So he's sitting there in like basketball shorts and a t-shirt. His girlfriend calls and he's just like, baby, I, this is crazy. I, I'll, I'm calm. I'm on my way home. I'm going to tell you what happened, but this is crazy. And, um, and when the pe- when the cops come in to like tell him that he's on administrative leave and all that stuff, they walk in, they go, woo, it's hot in here. And Daniel goes, yeah, it is. And they take his guns and they are going to give him a ride home. And so Daniel walked into this little hot room, a police officer and walked out pretty much in his underwear on administrative leave and like I said I think the whole fishing for victims and trying to get as many as they could really hurt this really this hurt the state's case and made it look pretty bad as it uh, went on from this interrogation 
but he was found guilty and he got 263 years. I'm going to cut it off there. Hope you're having a good week so far, and I'll see you next time. Why? Diving why?